So in today's video, I want to talk about a collaboration that Lingua Marina did with English with Lucy. Now, this collaboration is kind of interesting, but I want to go into why I think it's a bad collaboration. And when it comes to Lucy, actually, she kind of did a little bit what I might say malpractice when it came to teaching people English. But if you're wondering about the mistakes, English for Everyone did a whole entire video about the mistakes that uh, Marina made in this video. I mean, it's coming to a point now that both Kevin and Lisa could just like make a career off of criticizing Lingua Marina because she's always wrong and there's just too much as far as material out there to go after her. But uh, I want to take a clip out of the video that was on Lucy's channel and show you the mistake that was made. Again, Kevin and Lisa did talk about this, but I want to go into it a little bit further. So here is that clip. Just like the regular word would be the oven. If you say stove, I would say it implies something fancier. Like, you know, in, in American homes, if you see a stove with red knobs, that means it's a fancy home because it comes from uh, a particular brand that's really expensive. And like there is this. So in that clip, she mispronounces the word oven. She says like oven or something like that. It, she sounds like the Swedish chef or something like that, to be totally honest with you. <laughs> so now let's go down to the comments and look at a comment that somebody put in there that I think is absolutely spot on. So let's go ahead and read that. I was wanting to scream at Marina's explanation of the word stove. It does not imply something fancier. Stove in American English is simply the shortened term for stovetop. So stove is what we call the burners on the top of the oven. I don't know why Marina has never heard of that, but most Americans know that. The oven is the specific part that opens up from the front and where you bake things inside. So I bake cakes in the oven, but I cook soups on the stove. Got it, Marina? Good. And in this situation, Jacqueline is absolutely right. She made a mistake. Jacqueline actually explains what a stove is and the difference between a stove and an oven. But now let's look at the responses that both Lingua Marina and Lucy make in regards to this comment. Let's look at Lingua Marina's first. Marina says, my bad, completely agree. I noticed it on post-production, but for some reason it got into the final video. Thank you for pointing this out. No, 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 you didn't know it, Marina. You, you This was something that you didn't know. This wasn't a, a mistake that you didn't notice in post-production. No, 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 this is something that you didn't even know. But you went ahead and put it in there. You are so inflated when it comes to your knowledge of English. You're just like, oh, that must be right. Go ahead and put it in there. But now... The important thing to know is this is actually Lucy's video. So let's go ahead and look at Lucy's response almost immediately after that. I see your point, Jackie, but I do not welcome your attitude. You could have been so much kinder with your response. Well, Lucy, you could have been so much more responsible with your video. Jacqueline has absolutely every right to be mad that you are teaching incorrect English in your video. It is absolutely her right. Now, here's the thing. Jacqueline is a native English speaker from the United States, so she knows that that is a mistake. But what if you're somebody who is not a native English speaker and you're listening to this and you're being told that Marina knows American English and then gives you a wrong explanation, a wrong meaning of what the word oven is, as well as mispronouncing it, and you don't know because you are learning the language. All of this is new to you. So with Marina's error that she makes here and in post-production or whatever, both Marina and Lucy just say, we don't give a shit. We're going to keep it in, even though it's wrong. I have a big problem with that. You know, Lucy complaining to Jackie about her response is kind of like if your neighbor's dog comes and shits in your yard, but then your neighbor bitches that their dog shit in your yard. No, no, no. You should be the one that's able to bitch back at them because they're the ones who actually are in the wrong. But this furthermore shows the limitations that Marina has when it comes to using the English language. 
she did not know the difference between a stove and an oven. So therefore she gave an incorrect response and this is wrong. Now, let me go ahead and give you a clip of a video that was done recently where she talks about using the word interesting. And let me go ahead and play that clip for you. I was having dinner with my friend and I asked him what he thought about the food. And he said, it's interesting. I like, what do you mean? Like, um... And during the conversation, we figured out that he didn't really like it. So you see in that video, she talks about interesting and not knowing that interesting is used in this context. But anybody who is an American, if somebody says, oh yeah, that's interesting, they would know exactly what that meant. The fact that she had to think about it and she didn't know what it meant, then all of a sudden it dawned on her, oh, this is what it meant. It means that she doesn't have a strong grasp of situational awareness when it comes to the English language. So why in Lucy's video does she represent American English when she doesn't even know the basics of understanding situational awareness regarding certain words that we use in situations to maybe not say something very direct, like saying, oh yeah, that's interesting. It further shows her inability to actually have a stronger grasp of the English language than she does. So here's the problem I have when it comes to this is that she either thinks that she speaks just like a native English speaker and understands the situational awareness and everything like that, which in that case, she's lying to herself in her own mind, which is borderline delusional, or she just doesn't care. She knows that she's making the mistake. She's putting them out there all the time. Hence the reason Kevin and Lisa are able to have a whole entire channel nearly based on her mistakes. And she just doesn't care. At that point, I don't know which one is worse. The last one that she just doesn't care, it just shows it's about the money. The other one, it's it's just she, she has no grasp. She has no concept. She has no idea. And this is where I think this whole channel and what she does is she always steers people and leads people in the wrong direction saying, hey, I'm an authority when it comes to speaking English like an American and they say this. And then on the other hand, they don't say this. But as far as the errors that are committed in this video. I just say refer to Kevin and Lisa's video because they just go over all of them. I'll link it below as well. But back to Lucy and the question of why she didn't remove this part of the video. Now, Lucy had to have known that this was wrong. She had to have known. Don't give me the American, British, English difference excuses or whatever. We're not talking about like Bob's your uncle or whatever, where, where that is something totally different. I don't even know what the hell that means. But um, in this situation, there should have been some due diligence on both of their parts to make sure that their video is correct and sound and is giving the correct information because the people who are going to be taking in all this information are more than likely going to be non-native speakers of English. And with those people, as I mentioned earlier, they might not know what is correct and what's incorrect. And they're going to hear this and think that it is correct when it's not. And Lucy being the native British speaker that she is, she should have known this. She should have done the research. She should have been on top of this. But instead, what does Lucy do? She goes ahead and blames the person who does the criticism regarding the error that's in her own video. That's that's pretty rich of you to do that. I mean, let's be honest, it's pretty damn rich. And with the amount of followers that Lucy has, it's even more of a responsibility for her to make sure that she has the right information. Kangaroo English has talked about this a few times and he is absolutely right. The more and more subscribers you have, the more and more responsibility you have to make sure that your videos are 100% correct. And you're making enough money off of YouTube to be able to hire somebody to edit it to do that. Or you could do it yourself if you are a native English speaker like Lucy is. So why didn't she do that? Why was this not removed? And why were the other errors like I'm learning American um, or you are learning me American? That's what she said. You are learning me American. Why weren't errors like that taken out of the video? Was it because Lucy did not want to like shatter the ego 
of Marina was, is, is that's, is that it? I don't know. I, I really don't know. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's that they're business partners, right? They're both working together and they have a program where they teach people English and teach people advanced vocabulary, something like that. And honestly, I've seen it. It's, I call it Instagram vocabulary. I mean, if you're a functioning adult, you're not gonna use the words that they give in, in, in this course that they have. I mean, it's actually kind of a childish course. I mean, Netflix and chill, come the fuck on. I've never said that in my life and no one I know has probably ever said that. So it's, it's very much of a childish type of uh, program that they have that you can buy, the course that they have. But of course, that's what it is. That's why one doesn't criticize the other is because they're trying to sell a course together and the more criticism that they have towards them and the more inaccuracies that are shown in their videos then in that situation it questions the products they are selling more and this is where i th think we're falling right now and the reason why lucy became so defensive when somebody talked about the mistakes that marina made now, the next thing I want to talk about and something I do have an issue with, and, and I don't have an issue with it being a native English speaker from the United States. That's not the reason why. But to say Marina and, and to have on a thumbnail that Marina is the representation of American English is absolutely wrong. And why Lucy did this, again, Maybe she was trying to stroke the ego of Marina. I don't know. But why did she do that? We have 350 million people in this country. She couldn't have found one that was an English teacher who is a native English speaker from the United States. I mean, she's collaborated with them before. Why didn't she do that here? Why in this situation did she say Marina was a representation of American English? To me, that is absolutely wrong and is kind of deceiving as well. Now, here's the thing. I don't have a problem with non-native speakers at all. I've encouraged them and have said a lot of things on my channel regarding encouragement on how they should look at learning English. But when you are Lucy and you're saying that this person represents American English, yet there is a history of this person making a number of mistakes in her videos regarding English, regarding American English, pronunciation, um, you know, the, the wrong meaning of words. I mean, hell, she did it in her own video, in Lucy's video, actually, with the same word, oven. And it's, you know, it's at this point that the native speakers, we have a lot more pressure on our shoulders to make sure things are correct than non-native speakers. And in this situation, I think that Lucy saying that Marina represents American English is absolutely irresponsible on her part. And Marina also sits there and says, we say this and we say that. Oh, in American English, we say this. But, you know, she is not a native speaker of American English. And again, there, have, there are more than a number of videos out there that show her faults and her mistakes when it comes to English. So why did Lucy do that? I don't know. And then when it came to the word cookie and biscuit, she couldn't even explain what an American version of a biscuit is. I mean, yes, she could have mentioned cookie, but why didn't she mention biscuit as well? It just shows me that she might also not have the cultural awareness uh, here in the United States outside of living uh, in Silicon Valley, because it seems like her cultural awareness in the United States is very much centered on that Bay Area and nothing outside of it. And also, Americans do use the word autumn. I don't know. Yes, we use fall, but we use autumn as well. So I don't know why this seemed like it was some sort of difference when we use autumn all the time. It's not unusual. So I don't know where that came from. Now, a lot of you might say, well, now she's an American citizen. She can say this. Well, I know American citizens, second and even third generation Americans who don't speak a lick of English. They mostly speak Spanish. Now, am I going to say that because they're an American citizen that they then are a representative of American English? yet they don't speak English at all? No, so being a citizen of a country doesn't necessarily mean that you are then able to then proclaim that you are 
representative of the language in which is spoken there, especially when you have a history of making mistakes. All right, so I want to put this into perspective and expand on it a little more. So let's look at my situation. I love Canada. I want to immigrate there someday. I want to be a Canadian citizen. I lived in Canada for two years. I got my master's degree at a Canadian university. I actually studied Canadian politics and my works in Canadian politics are both in the library of the Quebec National Assembly and the National Archives of Canada. My favorite baseball team is the Toronto Blue Jays. My favorite sport is ice hockey. I watch more Canadian news on the CBC more than I watch American news. I know the Canadian folk songs for Christ's sakes. Oh, the year was 1778. I wish I was in Sherbrooke now. And my classmates at McGill even said sometimes that I was more Canadian than they were. Okay, that I really was immersed in the Canadian culture, and I am immersed in the Canadian culture and history and the understanding of everything. And on top of that, I am a native English speaker, and English is one of the few official languages in Canada. So if I became a Canadian citizen, with all of that said, and all of my knowledge, and the work that I have actually done in regards to Canadian politics and all that, I would never say, I would never have the gall, I would never have the audacity to say, I'm a Canadian speaker of English. Because no matter what, no matter how much I love Canada, no matter how much I immerse myself into it and become part of it, become part of society and all that, I'm still going to be an American speaker of English. Even if I do the Canadian accent and all that, I would never, never have the audacity to say, oh yeah, I'm a Canadian. And I'm, and, 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 and I'm a Canadian speaker, so if you want to know exactly how Canadians speak, go ahead and listen to me. Because no matter what, and no matter how much I've immersed myself into the Canadian way of living and Canadian culture, there are just some of the small cultural things that I will never understand. Some of the jokes, some of the other stuff. I mean, hell, I, I can... I can repeat all of Bob and Doug McKenzie's works that they have done, right? I mean, I know them by heart. I, I still don't know all of Canadian culture. And, 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 and at the end of the day, no matter how much I know about Canada, no matter how much I love Canada, no matter how much of a great country I think that is, I am never going to know what it feels like to be a Canadian. Yes, I can get Canadian citizenship, but I'm never going to know that cultural connection that Canadians have with their country. And as much as I want to have that, I would never again have the gall to sit there and say that I am a Canadian. And furthermore, that if you want to learn Canadian English, even though English is my native language, listen to me and I will teach you Canadian English. I, I think that that's just kind of ballsy to do that. And I think it's wrong as well. So at the end of the day, who do I blame? I don't blame Marina. I actually blame Lucy. It's a video on her channel. She knows the mistakes. Assuming it's on, it's on her channel. She's the one that did the editing, or at least her crew did the editing. She knew that there were mistakes in this video, pure and simple, but yet she didn't care. She went ahead and she put it up and she said, go ahead and go with this. And then once somebody actually called Marina out on the mistakes that she made, Lucy got mad. Anyway, she's just like, I, I don't like how you said that. Okay. Um, you have no room to bitch on this, Lucy. Okay. Especially when you nearly have 10 million people watching your channel or at least subscribed only about 3% watch it. But you know, you have a responsibility to make sure that you are giving correct information to the students who themselves are learning the language. And this is what's important. Now that video was done a while ago. I will admit that. And honestly, I think Lucy has gotten a little bit better. 
has gotten a little bit back on track. But when Kangaroo English called her out, I think they're absolutely 100% spot on on that. Christian was 100% spot on. And recently I did a podcast, which is going to be coming out in the near future, in which we talked about Lucy. And when Lucy did her apology, I thought that that apology she did about what Christian criticized her for was sincere. But other people thought that it was damage control. And I'm starting now to fall into that camp. I am starting to fall in to the camp of when it comes to Lucy, when it comes to Maria and all of them, it's more about money, 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 which of course all of us want to make money. There's no problem with that, but it's like making money yet not caring if you're correct in what you do. Selling bad products like Instagram English and stuff like that. I, I just think it's, it's absolutely, um, there needs to be a responsibility on their half to make sure that they're providing students with good educational material to learn English. And if you're Russian, because I haven't found many other reviews, if you hear a lot of uh, reviews of their, uh, their collaboration as far as their course, they're not great. They're not great. All right, so that's all I wanted to talk about today. Um, yeah, it's just a shame that when Marina and Lucy are called out for mistakes on their videos, even though Marina just lied, she's just like, oh, I noticed that in post-production. No, Marina, you didn't know that. You didn't know the difference between a stove and an oven. You just didn't know that. Admit that. Just admit that. Instead of just playing the lie, just admit that. But again, the way that Lucy responded, I thought was pretty shitty. And, uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully, um, you know, she doesn't do that that much anymore. Um, I don't think people should be collaborating with Lingua Marina because it takes a hit to their reputation due to the fact that Kevin and Lisa are just constantly making error videos on Marina's English. So yeah, that's where I stand. Thank you all very much. I had to do a review video like that because unfortunately that's what people want. I tried to do videos about, you know, is there a future tense in English, but no one watches them. Instead, you guys watch this. This is, I guess, what the channel is going to be now. <sighs> okay. But anyway, thank you all very much. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever it is you are, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Oh, the year was 1778. I wish I was in Sherbrooke now. A letter of Mark came from the king to the scummiest vessel I'd ever seen. God damn them all. I was told we'd cruise the seas for American gold. We'd fire no guns, shed no tears. Now I'm a broken man out of Halifax Pier to last to bear its privateers. Never said I was a singer.